Hey, everybody, this is Yuri from Sure. When you talk about condenser microphones, often you put them into one of two different categories, small diaphragm, like this wonderful KSM-141, or large diaphragm, like this equally wonderful KSM-44A. To help us understand the differences between these two designs, we've invited managing acoustic engineer Matthew Koshak. Matthew, thank you so much for being here. Yeah, happy to be here, Yuri. Thanks for having me. Yeah, this is going to be great. Uh, so my first question I'm is... I'm stoked. Yeah. And my first question <laughs> is, what do you do at Sure? Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, so I'm an acoustical engineer here at Sure, uh, and our department is responsible for basically anything acoustically related, any product that has an acoustical component. So whether it's a headphone, earphone, or microphone, we're resp responsible for the design of that, the acoustical aspect of that product. So, um, you know, we do a lot of, you know, we design it, we build it, we, we build a lot of our own prototypes, we test them, and uh, uh, we have two anechoic chambers, so we test them uh, extensively to, until we get the, the response and the performance exactly how we want it to be. And uh, that's a lot of what we do here. That's amazing. In your mind, as an engineer, uh, is there such a thing as a small diaphragm and a large diaphragm? Like, what, what is the differentiation generally between small diaphragm and large diaphragm? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, in my mind, you know, I guess in, in general, let's say people consider anything that's like maybe a half inch or less as a small diaphragm condenser and anything that's around one inch to be a large diaphragm conden condenser, which leaves this uh, kind of no man's zone in the, the middle, which is uh, you know something that's like a three quarter inch diaphragm. Is that large or is it small? I don't know. It's kind of in the middle. Um, but, uh, you know, I think that uh, those are the kind of like the commonly accepted definitions of large and small diaphragm, but maybe they needs to be like a, you know, a new one that's like medium diaphragm uh, condenser. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And one thing I wanted to point out is that in that medium range, the form factor could be either or, right? So for example, we have a microphone, the SM81, which I, as an audio engineer, have always considered it to be a small diaphragm microphone, but what's the size of it? Yeah, so that's about a three-quarter inch diaphragm. Right, so that's um, kind and, of like in between, right? Yeah, so it's kind of in between. And then we have the KSM-32 side address microphone, which is also a three-quarter inch diaphragm, but most people would probably say, oh, that's a large diaphragm condenser. So probably whether it's side address or end address does have some effect on the perception of whether it's a large or a small diaphragm as well. Uh, a lot of times audio engineers will say that a large diaphragm or a larger diaphragm is going to have a better low frequency response than a small diaphragm. So for example, if I wanted to record something that has significant low end, I'd probably reach for a, 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 sorry, a larger diaphragm microphone rather than a smaller one. Is there any logic to that? Um, you know, there's a little bit of logic to that. I will say that Unlike when we're talking about loudspeakers where you're trying to reproduce low frequencies and you need a bigger diaphragm, like, you know, obviously everyone knows that a 12-inch subwoofer produces a lot more low end than, a, you know, a 4-inch mid-range or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, however, with microphones, it's a little bit different because we're just sensing the pressure or the pressure gradient, depending on if it's an omnidirectional or a directional microphone. Um it doesn't necessarily like the size isn't as important to capturing a low frequency sound. However, there are some advantages to a large diaphragm condenser microphone that do give it a little bit of an edge over capturing a low frequency sound. Um, so condenser mic diaphragms are tensioned like a drum head. So if you can imagine like if you have a, a 10 inch rack tom versus a 16 inch floor tom, you know, those you hit them and they both have, you know, obviously one is higher pitched and one is lower pitched. Mm -hmm. Um, even though the tension is roughly the same, like it doesn't feel like the, the lower drum is real floppy because the tension is really what we're trying to is what we're focused in when we're designing like the the diaphragm for a condenser microphone. And so what's interesting is the resonant frequency of that diaphragm, whether it's a large or small diaphragm, is really important to to us as microphone designers. So with a small diaphragm. Uh, you know, small condenser mic diaphragm, we might have a resonant frequency in a vacuum of about eight kilohertz. Whereas 
a large diaphragm condenser mic, the resonant frequency would be somewhere around like three kilohertz, which probably doesn't sound like you were probably thinking that maybe it would be like a hundred hertz or something right. or yeah. 50. When, right. When I think low frequency response, I'm like, I'm taking a large diaphragm because it can do 50 hertz where a small diaphragm can't, mm -hmm. you know, I'm just throwing that number out there. But that's when I, when I think low frequency response, I'm thinking like below a hundred. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Um, but in reality, what, what, what we're setting with that resonant frequency is kind of the effective bandwidth of the entire mic frequency response. So because with the con uh, large diaphragm condenser, with that lower resonant frequency, we actually are able to push the low, fre push the low frequencies um, so they're a little bit flatter, mm -hmm. whereas um, on the uh, small diaphragm condenser, because it's a higher resonant frequencies, we're gonna start getting a little bit more roll off in the low frequencies just because our effective bandwidth is a little bit, is pushed up basically. Great, so that takes me to my next question. Does that mean that on the opposite end, do small diaphragm condensers have a better high frequency response? Yeah, absolutely. So it's exactly the, the opposite um, effect, right? So mm -hmm. since, because small diaphragm condensers, the resonant frequency is pushed up higher the effective kind of bandwidth of the mic is pushed up a lot higher as well. And so that's why with small diaphragm condenser, you can get um, out to like, you know, 40 kilohertz, wow. um, you know, and, and, and without, and, and still be pretty flat was compared to a, like a large diaphragm condenser mic. The other thing is now, you know, we could actually, and we're talking about directional mics here. So omnidirectional is like a different story. Like you can have a twin plex, you know, lavalier mic that's perfectly flat in the low end. So it's, um, uh, you know, it's, it's kind of you're dealing with a different animal. Yeah. But um, another thing that, because we have a, a few different handles that we can use to trade off, basically to tune the low frequency response of a microphone. So we can actually trade off sensitivity for low frequency response as well. So it's not that we couldn't have a large or a small diaphragm condenser mic with good low frequency extent uh, response. It would just require uh, sacrificing sensitivity. Uh, whereas with the large diaphragm condenser, because they typically have inherently higher sensitivity because it's just a larger microphone. So you, uh, you have, you're capturing more, uh, sound energy mm -hmm. um, because it's a larger sensor. So you can tend to throw away a little bit of sensitivity and it's not a big deal. So you can also kind of flatten the low frequency response out that way. Got it. And yeah. um, so if, if, if any of you are feline or canine listeners and you want to hear something in the 30,000 hertz range, please listen to small diaphragm condenser microphones. <laughs> and, exactly. Uh, yeah. A lot of people say that large diaphragms uh, have less noise than small diaphragms do as far as condenser microphones go. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah. And this is, uh, ties in with a little bit with what we just talked about, mm -hmm. that the sensitivity of a large diaphragm condenser mic is inherently higher. So sensitivity, again, is just um, when you have a certain SPL, say 94 dB SPL, which is what we typically use to spec the sensitivity, you're going to get a higher output from a large typically a higher output from a large diaphragm condenser for that same uh sound level versus a low uh sorry a small diaphragm condenser where you're going to get less output at that same um signal level and that so, has to do with that has to do with the size of the diaphragm itself yes yeah, so the size of diaphragm um, and also the fact that it's just, a, you know, because it's, keep in mind, these are condenser mics, so they're actually capacitors. So with a large diaphragm condenser, it's a larger capacitor. So you have higher capacitance and, and then just a larger sensor, so you have higher sensitivity. Got it. Now, if you think about the noise, so all condenser microphones um, have inherent noise due to the circuitry that's needed to make the diaphragm, or to make the microphone function. Mm -hmm. compared to dynamic microphones which don't have typically any internal circuitry and therefore are almost pretty much noiseless like there's still other sources of noise but they're pretty much negligible like dynamic mics have almost zero self noise um, condenser mics you have this inherent noise to the electronics but because you have higher sensitivity with a large diaphragm microphone and higher capacitance that effectively the noise is um, is pushed down 
and and relative to the signal. So your signal to noise is improved. Higher low, higher signal and lower noise, and so um, and so you get a uh, a better self noise spec. So again, and maybe we should talk about self noise just quickly. Like self noise is um, kind of how we spec it is like equivalent SPL. So you can think of it as if you had the microphone was always picking up, say it's like a, you know, 20 dB self noise. That means you're effectively, there's always like 20 dB, like a 20 dB signal that's always going to be in your mic. Yeah. So if like the KSM 44A, which the self noise spec on that microphone is only 4 dB SPL. So you would have to be like something really quiet to, uh, to, to be, you know, close to the noise floor of that microphone. Got it. So if I'm in a recording studio and I want, I'm recording something whisper quiet and I want the most sensitive microphone possible that has the least amount of noise, I would reach for a large diaphragm compared to a small diaphragm. Yeah, Got absolutely. It. But if I'm like recording a rock band where they're going to be blasting sound at 100 decibels or so, uh, self noise probably doesn't matter nearly as much. No, yeah, exactly. Then you're more interested in what the, the max SPL capability of the mic would be versus self noise. Fantastic. And uh, yeah, and just to verify, the KSM 44A right here has a self noise of four decibels, while the KSM 141 has a self noise of 14 decibels. So, yeah. so there you go. Yeah, there you go. Uh, <laughs> Which is still pretty good. 14 is still pretty low, but I don't think I've ever four. been in an environment that's quieter than 14 decibels. To be honest with you, even even a music studio, I, I don't. If, if I were to, I'm just curious now. If I were to go into a music studio and measure the ambient noise level of a music studio roughly where would it be i mean probably a really good music studio i'm guessing it would be what maybe 20 somewhere mm -hmm. around 20 or something like that maybe less i'm yeah. not sure so, yeah. so even a small diaphragm condenser will be quieter than any of the ambience that i would have in even the quietest of the quiet studios yeah i know like our anacoke chamber is we're sitting somewhere the the ambient noise level in there is somewhere around minus four so, yeah, so quieter than most people can hear. Wow, that is insane. I'm a classical music engineer, right? So most of the stuff mm -hmm. I record is very sensitive instruments, lots of frequencies, like very, very detailed type stuff, right? So I'm a small diaphragm microphone uh, fanatic. And uh, classical engineers will tend to say that small diaphragms, they have, we all just talked about the high frequency response, but I'm also told that they have a, uh, a, a faster transient response. So when, when sound hits the diaphragm, because of the fact that they're smaller, they respond quicker than, say, a large diaphragm does. Is there any logic to that statement? Um, I would say there's, there's a little bit of logic to that statement. You know, if you think about um, when it comes to transient response, you're talking about how fast can the diaphragm react to the sound wave. And so if you have let's take it to a more extreme example with a dynamic mic you've got a bigger thicker diaphragm a heavy coil so it takes a little bit more to get it moving compared to a condenser mic which is a very light thin diaphragm um and however i would say that probably the difference between like a large diaphragm condenser and a small diaphragm condenser in terms of the mass of the diaphragm just due to the sheer size is probably pretty minimal so i would say on paper yeah it's a lower mass so so probably better transient response, but um, I'm not sure how much uh, better it would be versus a, a large, you know, a large uh, diaphragm condenser. So probably there is a little bit of difference, but yeah. So compared to a dan dynamic microphone, there will be a huge difference in the transient response. Uh, just yeah, just exactly. On the basis of it being condenser and dynamic, but comparing a large diaphragm condenser to a small diaphragm condenser, there's probably I wouldn't say negligible, but a much smaller difference in what the transient response would be. Exactly. Great. Yeah. So another thing that classical recording engineers like myself always talk about is that small diaphragm condenser mics have a better off-axis response compared to large diaphragm microphones. Uh, is that because of the diaphragm? Is it because of the form factor or both? Or is that even a thing? Yeah, there's a few things that play into it. And it's def definitely a thing. Um, so with the small diaphragm condensers, they tend to be more minimal, like there's less to the grill uh, part of the microphone. Typically the capsule is kind of integrated into the handle in such a way that, yeah, mm -hmm. you've got the 141 there. So you have the front and it's just a, a flat grill 
and then the, the rear entries to the cartridge are kind of, um, you know, on the sides there mm -hmm. that kind of integrated into the capsule. Whereas with the large diaphragm condenser, you have this, typically it's, uh, you know, the capsule itself sits inside of this kind of larger grill assembly, which we go to great lengths to try to reduce the effect of that grill assembly on the acoustics, but it's kind of a necessary evil because otherwise without that, you know, um, if you drop the mic or, you know, it could break or, or you smash the diaphragm or you get dirt and, you know, dust on the diaphragm or something like that. So that's not good. Um, and then just the size of the diaphragm itself. So with a small diaphragm, you get less diffraction effects and diffraction effects have to do with the way the pressure builds up on the diaphragm. And as you get off axis, um, it, it, um, there's less shadowing of the actual diaphragm itself because it's physically smaller. So you get, to, especially at high frequencies, you get to get a more consistent off axis response. And I think it tends to sound more natural, um, because it's just a more consistent polar pattern. So you don't have, you know, at some frequencies, maybe you've got a cardioid, but then at higher frequencies, it's maybe, you know, um, super cardioid or something, some other different polar response. Got it. Matthew, thank you so much for joining us. This has been super awesome and super educational. Uh, we're glad that you had some time to join us and talk to us about all this cool stuff. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for having me, Yuri. It's, uh, it's been great to uh, talk about microphones and, uh, you know, hopefully people will uh, get something out of this and, yeah. and learn a little bit more and hopefully help them use our microphones a little bit better. And there you have it. If you have any other questions for me or Matt, please leave them in the comments and we'll see you next time. <laughs>